Gonzalo Lyra missing. Is he in trouble? Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. And you ain't black. The first time ever any. What are you people? We're Americans. Oh, wait. Uh, Robert Barnes reported that he is okay. So I may not have to do this story because that's the best of all possible worlds. Let me find this Robert Barnes. Who's Robert Barnes? Is he uh, Supreme Court for the Washington? Uh, Jason, do me a favor. Um, wh where do you see that? That that uh, Lyra's okay from Robert Barnes. This is a developing story, guys. So uh, be patient. But uh, hopefully, hopefully Lyra is okay. But where did you see that? A reminder that the Daily Beast contacted Ukraine's Nazi-infested government to request a comment on the status of viral YouTuber Real Gonzalez at the time. He accused him trying to get him killed. Nobody's heard of him since April. Where? And when was that podcast? When was that podcast? Uh, show me the link, Jason. Because as recently as three hours ago, CNN Chile confirmed that G Gonzalo Lira was missing. So if you have an update, that would be great. Let me check on CNN Chile. Because I haven't I haven't heard that about Gonzalo yet. So before I go on this story, guys, um, I just want to make sure that it's completely accurate and then we'll 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 discuss it. But um, Gonzalo Lira. Uh, two hours ago. Okay, I'm 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 just gonna I'm just gonna uh, do the story, guys, because right now, right now, I'm not hearing any anybody else say that he has been uh, apprehended in a safe way. As a matter of fact, Aaron Mate, um, who's been following this story closely, hasn't um, hasn't said so either. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to report it. Uh, listen, it, uh, Jason, if you have the link, please direct me to the link or direct me to the title of the of the uh, of the article or the the title of the YouTube video, and we'll play it here. But as far as I know, Gonzalo is still lost. Okay, guys, here here is the story um, about Gonzalo Lyra. Okay, so Gonzalo. Gonzalo is, as I said, he was—he is a currently a, as far as we know, a. Uh, he he's born in Chile, but he he's been very very critical of Ukraine and and the uh, the ultra nationalists in Ukraine. He's been tweeting, doing interviews, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And recently, folks have expressed concern because he has not been posting. As a matter of fact, uh, Gonzalo said the following. Check this out, guys, um, because this this stuff right here is is pretty terrifying. So here we go. Uh, it's extremely troubling that real Gonzo Lyra, a U.S. citizen in Ukraine, has disappeared from social media. He was scheduled to interview me last Friday about Zelensky's SBU kidnapping and assassinating dissidents, and now I fear that he has become its latest victim. Now, you see this little thing here that he has in the uh, in, in, in the postscript there? Gonzalo said, Google these names. If you want to learn the truth about the Zelensky regime, Google these names. And then he lists a bunch of people, including Dennis Kyrieve, um, who were um, basically killed, kidnapped, tortured, and killed by uh, the Ukrainian elements of the Ukrainian government. And again, when I say elements of the Ukrainian government, you have got to take into account the fact that 
many folks in the Ukrainian government uh, and many active folks in Ukraine on the military side are part of the neo-Nazis. So I don't want to bl- I'm trying to make a distinction between the Ukrainian government. Um, I'm trying to make a distinction between the Ukrainian government and neo-Nazis. OK, but so he, he sends out this list of uh, people who have been kidnapped or, or executed by the Ukrainians. And, and then he says, if I don't post in 12 hours, I'm on this list. Okay, meaning I'm one of those people who, who's been kidnapped and killed. Okay, that's what he said. He said, at the end of this, he says, if I don't post in 12 hours, it's because I'm one of those people on the list. Okay, Gonzalo hasn't, hasn't tweeted in about 48 hours much closer to three days actually he hasn't tweeted in three days nobody um nobody can get in contact with him supposedly um so that's what's been going on uh with gonzalo now hold on we've got a breaking we've got a breaking uh thingamajiggy here if i can get a youtube video there's the youtube video from amy lee forever and it says Gonzalo Lyra reported to be captured is the name of the video. Jason is saying it's 20, 23 minutes into the video, but there's only 12, there's only 12 minutes. Jason, this video is only 12 minutes long. Um, so Jason, get us, get, get me the video. Okay. So there you go. Gonzalo Lyra, there he is. He says, if I don't respond in, in, in 12 hours, it's because I've got, I'm on this list. I've been captured by the, these bad actors. But even more concerning, watch, watch what else has happened. Okay? Um, l- look, look, look at this. There's this guy named Botsman. He's a, he's a, uh, he's a Ukrainian, he's a Ukrainian uh, Azov Nazi fella. Okay. Jason, get me the link and I I will play it. Right now, all I have is that he's missing. If you're saying that he's alive, I would like to know. Aaron Mate doesn't know. Nobody knows that he's alive. But if you've got breaking news, please provide us the link and then we'll be able to look at it. Okay? All right. Uh, Tweets from the Ukrainian Nazi Sergei Botsman, who has now made his account private, says Gonzalo Lyra has been kidnapped, tortured, and might be beheaded. Impossible to verify, but this is plausible. SBU is known to torture and murder its victims. Remember, the SBU are the folks who killed Dennis Kyrieve, who was trying to negotiate for peace with Russia. From the Twitter account of the infamous Ukrainian neo-Nazi Botsman, or Botsman, remember his name, he was in the first group of troops to enter Buka. Gonzalo Lyra is most likely to have been taken by them. He's watching here just now, by the way. Okay, so there you go. Uh, th- that's, you've got some Ukrainian Nazis saying that he's been captured. Here, here's, here he is right here. Inshallah, let's hope this is true. Somebody's saying, we don't know for sure if he's dead. They might still be torturing him. He says, Inshallah, let's hope this is true. And then you have, uh, this right here. The irony of Gonzalo Lyra, a Chilean, being caught by a guy with the call sign Chile is hilarious anyway let's hope the beheading pops up on telegram soon okay so there there's this guy by the name of uh chile in in uh azov battalion and uh this guy is saying that um it may very well be that he was beheaded by that guy okay these folks are absolutely unbelievable check this out that guy right there that's that's making the bicep, the guy right there that's doing the bicep pose, that's Chile, okay? If anyone knows where Gonzalo Lyra is, please make a single bicep pose. That right there is Chile, and he, according to this guy, is the one that killed Gonzalo Lyra. So he's openly bragging about allegedly assassinating, killing this dissident who was tweeting. They're, they're openly bragging about murdering this dude. And then <laughs> what's even worse um, is this. 
Sergei Botsman of the Azov Battalion has beheaded people before. He beheaded Shamil Odominov for being Dagestani in an infamous murder video from 2007. Once again, these are the people that want war at any and every cost. Okay? So, these are the people that want war at any and every cost. They've already beheaded people on camera and cycled it. Here's Scott Ritter uh, speaking on the issue. Scott Ritter, former UN uh, weapons inspector who spoke out against uh, uh, U.S. involvement in Iraq. Kharkov is definitely a city that's firmly in the grip of the Nazis. That's where that's where Lyra was. And anybody who lives in that city, such as Mr. Lyra, who is not of that political persuasion, is at risk. So right now, guys, all we know is that Gonzalo Lyra is uh, missing. Um, he is feared to be beheaded. He is feared to have been to being tortured. This is a guy. Um, who was tweeting and giving interviews critical of Ukraine. But he's turned up missing and uh, feared to be dead. And as Tasco says, I, I have very, very little hope that this guy is going to end up uh, being end up being found alive. I, I've got, you know, I'm generally an, uh, an optimistic person, but I have very little hope that he is going to um he's going to make it out of this alive um they're calling him a russian spy which is all you have to do apparently unbelievable unbelievable and by the way guys if you were curious the azov nazi guy who goes around beheading people and celebrating the beheadings of people has not been banned or deplatformed by twitter if you were if you were curious as to how Twitter was going to respond to militant Nazis calling for the beheading of people because they're using their free speech capabilities uh, to criticize Ukraine. Um, the guy who's bragging about killing that guy and joking about beheading that guy and encouraging other people to do the same. Um, he is is. Uh, He's fine. He's fine on YouTube. He's got a <laughs> He's completely fly, fine to use the platform. But a sitting uh, a United States president, a satirical site, Tucker Carlson, etc., those people need to be deplatformed because they're dangerous. But the guy who's talking about chopping people's heads off for daring to speak critically of Ukraine, he's okay. He's okay. Unbelievable. Look, guys, my, the reason I'm doing this report is simply to say you have got to figure out what side you're on. If you want to be on the side of a country that does this to people, uh, go for it. If you want to pretend like Brent said that there's only it's just just good guys, these are just good guys and the Russians are just horrible, then 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 go for it. I'm going to read you guys this article about um, about um, how the Ukrainian government and elements in Ukraine deal with dissenters. Here we go. Um, and guys, please, please be cautioned. Some of this stuff is going to get, going to get graphic. And, you know, at, at this point, I really can't avoid it. Okay. But here we go. This is from the gray zone, uh, 17 April, one less traitor. Zelensky oversees campaign of assassination, kidnapping and torture of political opposition now again i'm going to disagree from the jump and say that Zelensky is a captured compromised asset now of these of these of the the far-right nazi ultranationalist faction in ukraine i do not believe that this is Zelensky's policy as a as a volunteer i believe he is forced to do this stuff so um that's my disagreement with the premise of this article, but uh, let's continue. While claiming to defend democracy, Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky has outlawed his opposition, ordered his rival's arrest, and presided over the disappearance and assassination of dissidents across the country. That was dated 17 April. I don't know if Gonzalo is going to be mentioned in this particular uh, article. Um, let me see. Oh, well, his... 
yeah, he. I don't think Gonzalo is mentioned in this article. <sighs> Zelensky stated, right now, the destiny of our country is being decided. The destiny of our people, whether Ukrainians will be free, whether they'll be able to preserve their democracy. U U.S. corporate media has responded by showering Zelensky with fawning press, driving a campaign of his nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize and ins inspiring a flamboyant musical tribute to himself and the Ukrainian military during the 2022 Grammy Awards on April 3rd. Holy smokes. Western media has looked the other way, however, as Zelensky and top officials and administration have sanctioned a campaign of kidnapping, torture, and assassination of local Ukrainian lawmakers accused of collaborating with Russia. Several mayors and other Ukrainian officials have been killed since the outbreak of war, many reportedly by Ukrainian state agents after engaging in de-escalation talks with Russia. Remember, we talked about this. Denis Kyriv, he was assassinated by the SBU in order to um, stop the peace negotiations. There is one less traitor in Ukraine, Internal Affairs Ministry advisor Anton Goroshenko stated in an endorsement of the murder of a Ukrainian mayor accused of collaborating with Russia. Zelensky has further exploited the atmosphere of war to outlaw an array of opposition parties, none of the far-right Nazi parties, though, and order the arrest of his leading rivals. His authoritarian decrees have triggered the disappearances, torture, and even murder of, array, of an array of human rights activists, communists, and leftist organizers, journalists, and government officials accused of pro-Russia sympathies. Do you see how this Russophobic language that we've all been inundated with is so dangerous? So now all you have to do is accuse someone of collaborating with Russia and we can literally end your life. The Ukrainian SBU security services has served as the enforcement arm of the officially um, authorized campaign of repression. With training from the CIA and close coordination with Ukraine state-backed neo-Nazi paramilitaries, the SBU has spent weeks filling its vast ar archipelago of torture dungeons with political dissidents. On the battlefield, meanwhile, with the Ukrainian military has engaged in a series of atrocities against captured Russian troops and proudly exhibited its sadistic acts on social media. Here, too, the perpetrators of human rights abuses appear to receive their approval from the upper echelons of Ukrainian leadership. And again, um, for the most part, these people are not banned. The dude that was bragging about beheading Gonzalo still has a, he still has a Twitter account. And by the way, that guy participated in a videotape beheading in 2007. He has an active Twitter account. While Zelensky uh, spouts bromides about the defense of democracy before worshipful Western audiences, he's using the war as a theater for enacting a blood-drenched purge of political rivals, dissidents, and critics. I just think this is so unfair to Zelensky. I do not believe that Zelensky is behind this. We've already seen that Zelensky confronted Azov face to face about enacting peace in the Donbass region, but he is now being threat. He they threatened to murder him, so I believe he is now a compromised asset. Now a person could say, "Well, you should give your life for your country. You're a coward." In that respect, I agree, but they're making it sound like this is coming from Zelensky, and I do not believe, based on the little evidence that we have, that this is actually coming. From Zelensky, we continue. The war is... <laughs> Here, here's Al. Al, God bless you, brother. I expect the American government to investigate the kidnapping and potential murder of an American citizen born in Burbank, California, not the Chilean government. Al, that would only happen if the American government cares and wants to bring attention to the fact that one of our citizens has been kidnapped and tortured and murdered. But if that does not go with the U.S.'s agenda to demonize Russia and sanctify Ukraine, then we're not going to pursue it. So I know that that's what you would expect. But maybe, maybe now, Al, you can see that our country has different priorities than what you would expect to happen. We continue. The war is being used to kidnap, imprison, and even kill opposition members who express themselves critical of the government. A left-wing activist beaten and persecuted by Ukraine security services commented on April, we must all fear for our freedom and for our lives. You know, when the Ukrainians nationalized their media, I had a lot of people saying, oh, that's just common wartime practice. No, it's not. 
Not in the Western world in the last 50 years. We've been in jihad for 20 years. We didn't nationalize the media. The, U the folks in UK and Australia didn't nationalize the media. It is not normal to nationalize the media in times of war. Only despotic countries do that. Only countries ruled by ter uh, tyrannical overlords do that. But we look the other way. Because we've been programmed to think that the Ukrainians are good and the Russians are evil. So when the Russians do that to political prisoners, I have, Vin, don't you see what the Russians are doing? Yes. Vladimir Putin's a bad guy. He's horrible. He's Dr. Evil. We've already, we've already established that. But are you going to look at the fact that Ukraine is doing the exact same thing? Oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's come up with some excuse and be inconsistent and say it's whataboutism and yada, yada, yada. Okay, great. And now you have... A country where people are being kidnapped for putting out bad tweets. <sighs> when a U.S. backed government seized power in Kiev following the Euromaidan regime change operation in 2013 and 14, Ukraine's government embarked on a nationwide purge of political elements deemed pro Russian or insufficiently nationalistic. The passage of decommunization, please note. This is 2013 and 14 prior to any Russian, quote, invasion. So please stop using the Russian invasion to justify every horrible thing that these Ukrainians do to their own people, by the way. <sighs> Decommunization laws by the Ukrainian parliament further ease the prosecution of leftist elements and the prosecution of activists for political speech. The post-Maidan regime has focused its wrath on Ukrainians who have advocated for peace settlement with pro-Russian separatists in the East, in the countries East, that's the Donbass region, those who have documented human rights abuses by the Ukrainian military and members of communist organizations. Remember, it was the left-wing socialist communist organizations that got de-seated in the, in the parliament. So that any voice of peace at the legislative level in Ukraine has effectively been silenced, dear listener. So any opposition by common people, which is media, silence. We've nationalized the media. Anybody at the legislative level who can, who can go against us in, the, in, this, in this bloodless and war, we're going to deceit them. And all of us look the other way. The Ukrainian security service known as the SBU has served as the main enforcer of the post-Maidan government's campaign of domestic political repression. Pro-Western monitors, including the United Nations Office of the High Commission and Human Rights Watch, have accused the SBU of systemically torturing political opponents and Ukrainian dissidents with near total immunity. The United, the United Nations... Uh, Office of uh, Human Rights, blah, 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 blah. the United Nations Office of the High Commission in 2016 said that arbitrary detention, enforced disappearances, torture, and ill treatment of such conflict related detainees were common practice of SBU, a former Kharkiv SBU officer explained. For the SBU, the law virtually does not exist as everything that is illegal can either be classified or explaining by referring to state necessity. Dear listener, in 2016, the United Nations, the United Nations stated explicitly that these folks are arbitrarily holding people for detention and forced disappearances, torture, and ill treatment of conflict-related detainees. This is prior to any invasion. This is who they were. Yvonne Karas, the founder of the infamous neo-Nazi uh, C-14 unit, has detailed the close relationship his gang and other extreme right factions have enjoyed with the SBU. The SBU informs not only us, but also Azov, the right sector, and so on. Karas boasted in a 2017 interview. So the SBU is a military wing of Azov and all the rest of these uh, as far as targeted assassinations, detaining, detaining folks, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that is what's been going on. That's what's been going on, dear listener. 
Since Russia launched its military operation inside Ukraine, the SBU has hunted down local officials that decided to accept humanitarian supplies from Russia or negotiated with, with Russian forces to arrange corridors for civilian evacuations. Please note, the SBU has hunted down local officials that decided to accept humanitarian supplies from Russia. That would go to Ukrainian civilians. They were executed for doing so. On March 1, for example, Voldemort Strzok, the mayor of the eastern city of Kremina in the Ukrainian-controlled side of Lugansk, was kidnapped by men in military uniform, according to his wife, and shot in the heart. On March 3rd, pictures of Strzok's visibly tortured body appeared. A day before his murder, Strzok had reportedly urged his Ukrainian colleagues to negotiate with pro-Russian officials. This is what we const consistently see. You have elements in Ukraine that are desperate for peace, that want peace, that are doing everything possible to promote peace. They end up missing or dead. We saw this with Zelensky. Zelensky tried his hardest to get these people to follow the Minsk Accords and they threatened to murder him. Why, why are we not hearing about uh, Buka anymore? Remember there was a massacre in Buka? There were human rights atrocities in Buka? How come we're not hearing about Buka anymore? Is it because uh, on the 31st of March, they went up and down the street saying that they were going to be in a clearing op operation to clear the area of saboteurs and collaborators with Russia. Then a whole bunch of dead bodies appeared, dear listener. Do what you will with that. Do what you will with that. Anton Garoshenko, an advisor to Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs, celebrated the mayor's murder, declaring on his Telegram page... This guy is an advisor to the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs. Unbelievable. He says, there is one less traitor in Ukraine. The mayor of Kremenia in Luhansk region, former deputy of Luhansk parliament, was found killed. According to Garoshenko, Stock had been judged by the court of the People's Tribunal. And they've got a picture of his body there, which I am not going to show because I do not show war porn, but... It's his dead body, and yes, he was absolutely tortured. Ukrainian official therefore delivered a chilling message to anyone choosing to seek cooperation with Russia. Do so and lose your life. On March 7th, the mayor of Gostomel, Yuri Prolipiko, was also found murdered. Prolipiko had reportedly entered into negotiation with the Russian military to organize a humanitarian corridor for the evacuation of its city's residents. A red line for Ukrainian ultranationalists who had long been in conflict with the mayor's office. Note, this man was negotiating with the Ukra with, with Russia to create a, a humanitarian evacuation corridor where Ukrainian civilians could escape the jihad. I'm really upset about this because this hurts Ukrainian civilians. I do not feel bad for the mayor, and I honestly, I don't feel bad for Prolipko. Because the fact of the matter is, when you become a leader, your job is to lay your life down for your people. So you take that job, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm the man of this house, I tell my kids all the time. Somebody comes to the door, I'm going, to the, I'm going down there. Somebody's got to die, the leader always needs to die. We just celebrated Easter. If you're the leader, you're going to die, that's how it is. So respect to those mayors and such that died. They knew they were risking their lives. I don't feel bad for them. They died an honorable death. My problem, dear listener, is the civilians. The civilians who voted for Zelensky to bring them peace and who want desperately to have some peace. And now you've got this war and the Russians are like, okay, let's talk. Let's negotiate how to get your civilians out of there. But you know what happened? These people, these Nazis, they want dead Ukrainians. We know they want dead Ukrainians. These are the same people who set up howitzers by kindergartens, get confronted by kindergarten teachers. They set up howitzers by malls. They went to Mariupol and they set up their command base in a hospital because they know 
that it puts Russia in an insane situation and they're going to be able to parade a bunch of Ukrainian dead people so they can get more weapons from us, guys. That's what's happening. How are we supporting this? On March 24th, Gennady Mastegora, the mayor of Kupiansk in northern Ukraine, released a video appealing to President Volodymyr Zelensky and his administration for the release of his daughter, who had been held hostage by agents of the Ukrainian SBU intelligence agency. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They got this dude's daughter. Dear residents of Ukraine... His daughter, Daria Genadovna Mastegora, is missing. She was born in the year 2002. They kidnapped this guy's daughter, the SBU, in Ukraine. They kidnapped this guy's daughter. Then there was the murder of Dennis Kyrieff. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so somebody else is talking about it. There is the murder of Denis Kyrieff, a top member of the Ukrainian negotiating team who was killed in broad daylight in Kiev after the first round of talks with Russia. Kyrieff was subsequently accused in local Ukrainian media of treason. So Denis Kyrieff was an official. He was part of the Ukrainian government. And his stance was, we need to negotiate with Russia and get out of this war as soon as possible. They executed him in broad daylight. The SBU did. These people, it doesn't matter if you're the mayor, if you're on the negotiating team, if you're on Twitter, if they can get you, they will get you. These people want war, and that is all they want, and that is the side that our country is taking. I cannot believe that people are justifying this shit. Russia is sitting there saying, okay, fine, we're going to kill all of you, but okay, let's let's take out your civilians. Let's negotiate a corridor for when you could do this. By the way, I don't know any of you if you know anything about tactics, but that obviously puts Russia at a disadvantage. Anytime you create a corridor that lets civilians out, you're creating a tactical uh, disadvantage to yourself because people who are militants can front as if they're civilians, and then you can have a transport portal back and forth, get out uh, civilians, etc. Uh, you're injured, etc., etc., or smuggle in arms, etc., etc. You're supposed to completely cut off a city and not let anyone in or out. This is a modern thing where you can negotiate to get the people out of there. But the, the Russians were willing to do that, but the Nazis were not. Because they need human dead civilians in Ukraine so that you and I can pressure our government to spend more billions, initiate a no-fly zone, all types of craziness. President Voldemort Zelensky's statement that there would be consequences for collaborators indicates that the atrocities have been sanctioned by the highest levels of government. There it is. And again, I don't I, I don't believe that Zelensky is behind this. But, I mean, he is participating. There will be problems for cooperation with them or with the occupiers directly. This is the last warning. There will be consequences for working with the collabor or, or collaborating with them. This is your last warning. I do not believe that this is coming from Zelensky's heart. This is coming from a guy, in my opinion, who is being threatened to be murdered by Nazis. Now, you could say, well, Vin, you said that he was the leader. The leader should die for his people. I agree. At minimum, we can accuse him of cowardice. He's a coward. I agree. But this is not coming from him. And I think it's a mistake. I'm not saying this necessarily to defend Zelensky. What I'm saying is... We need to we need to 
to make sure that we're clear who the actual bad guy is and which group of people are perpetuating the bloodshed of innocent people. So I, I, I you guys are right. He's a leader. He's ultimately responsible. The buck stops with him. And at minimum, he's a coward. The reason that I'm making the dichotomy between him and the Nazis is to say, but he is not the problem. If Zelensky died tomorrow and they set somebody in there who was a man who would be willing to die for his people, he would be dead and they would get somebody else. That's not the problem. If we got rid of Azov and SBU, which I keep hearing, they're just a small group, Vin. Well, if we got rid of those people, then we would have peace tomorrow. That's the difference. We continue. As of today, 11 mayors from various towns in Ukraine are missing. Western media outlets have been following the Kiev line without exception, claiming that all mayors have been arrested by the Russian military. The Russian Ministry of Defense has denied the charge, however, and little evidence exists to corroborate Kiev's line about the missing mayors. When war erupted with Russia this February, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky issued a series of decrees following uh, formalizing Kiev's campaign against political opposition, etc., etc. Um, next, on April 12th, Zelensky announced the arrest of his principal political rival, Viktor Medvedchuk, of Ukraine's SBU, by, by Ukraine's SBU security services. Many on Telegram channels are suspecting that the SBU has held Med Medjekuk in a prison basement for weeks and published the photos now to distract from Ukraine's losses on the battlefield. No way to know. Here is his face. Clearly bruised, apparently a result of beatings from the SBU goons. Don't expect any questions about this image to appear on the pages of the New York Times, etc., etc., etc. The founder of the second largest party of Ukraine, the now illegal Patriots for Life, Medvedchuk, is a de facto representative of the country's ethnic Russian population. Though Patriots for Life is regarded as pro-Russia, in part because of his close relations with Putin, the new chairman of the party has condemned Russia's aggression against Ukraine. That doesn't matter. All right. Uh, sorry about that one, guys. Since Russian troops entered Ukraine on February 24th, Ukraine's SBU security service has been on a rampage Against any and all iterations of eternal political opposition, leftist Ukrainian activists have faced particularly harsh treatment, including kidnapping and torture. This March 3rd, in the city of Dnipro, SBU officers accompanied by Azov ultranationalists raided the home of activists with the uh, Liftjiza, which would be the left organization, which has organized against social spending cuts and right-wing media propaganda. While one activist said the Azov member cut my hair off with a knife, the state security agents proceeded to torture her husband, Alexander, pressing a gun barrel to his head and forcing him to repeatedly belt out the nationalist salute, Slava Ukraine. Then they put bags over our heads, tied our hands with tape, and took us to the SBU building in a car. There they continued to interrogate us and threatened to cut off our ears. The Azov members and SBU uh, agents recorded the torture session and published images of uh, his bloodied face online. I'm not going to post it. Um, he was jailed on the grounds of etc. I mean, it's just over and over again. And these folks are killing people. And I'm going to stop reading this article because there's too many pictures of dead people in this article and I can't deal with it. Okay. All right. There you go, guys. So that, that that's what we have. We are supporting a regime that kidnaps, tortures, murders people. Um, Jackson Hinkle did a, uh, a show on Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Um, shout out to Jackson Hinkle. Um, and our our media, I'd be very surprised if our media is covering it. Um, but it's very, very clear to me. There, there is a uh, very small but very militant element in Ukraine that does not want peace at all with Russia, uh, wants a bunch of uh, dead Ukrainian civilians and um, is, is, are completely driven by uh, far-right ultra-nationalist, white nationalist ideology. And um, I, I, I agree. You guys have changed my mind a bit. If I'm being consistent, you have to condemn... Uh, Zelensky a bit for his cowardice um, for not standing up for his folks. At the same time, I understand human nature. Who knows what they're doing with his family? Who knows who they have? But um, 
I I think I think we've done we we've we've pretty much isolated who the real bad guys here are and why we can't have any peace in that region as long as those folks are still around and as long as our country is willing to arm them and as long as our citizenry is willing to allow these atrocities to continue and to make excuses for these atrocities and to ignore these atrocities by saying, that's what about ism. This war is going to continue. And you know what? America is going to benefit. We're going to get all the gas patronage uh, of Europe. We've got Finland and Sweden already wanting to be part of NATO, which means everybody's going to bow the knee to us. We, we'll, we'll have a, uh, we'll always have a customer for weapons that we can sell. And on top of that, the Russians are going to get weaker and weaker and weaker and more and more and more isolated as this continues. So this, this benefits America exponentially, exponentially. Um, so there you go. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable stuff, guys. Much love to everybody. Um, love your neighbor, huh? In the meantime, love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America, we are the media. Till next time, guys.